be be times unto him, and let thy foot wear thy steps of the, of his door. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord, and meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. See, because it takes discipline, and in order to get the benefit of it, you have to go through the discipline. <laughs> Which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barachah means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shabbat Shalom. It's a brother Matathia from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And um, see, I just played a little clip from the Apostle Ram Lav's lesson from earlier today. And he spoke about how there would be no benefit unless uh, uh, discipline is applied, right? And I'm going to play it again. No benefit without discipline. You see? That's a lesson right there. No benefit without discipline, you know? And first and foremost, it starts with denying ourselves, as Yahweh Shah spoke about. Let's grab that first. <clears throat> this is Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Yahweh Shah unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And there's another one where it says, Take up his cross daily. Yep, Luke 9 and 23. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And a cross represents the trials, afflictions, and tribulations that we will go through for the word's sake. Right? It tells us in Sirach, the second chapter, when we come to serve the Lord, prepare our soul for temptation, set our heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in a time of trouble. Because in doing those things, matter of fact, let me hold that there. Let me grab this. Because in doing those things, we are being taught, we are being instructed in the way of the Lord. Here in the book of Revelation 3 and 19, it tells us, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, keep in word this word, chasten right here. Chasten. Keep in word, blah, blah, blah. keep in mind this word chasten. You can see here it says to train children to be instructed or taught or learn. Right? To cause one to learn. You see? So what we're learn oop, down here, educate or discipline. Instruct, learn, teach. And this is exactly the process that we're going through. Right? And learning how. To deny ourselves. Now, when you go back to this Luke and you look up um, the word deny here in Luke 9 and 23. The key one I want is right here. It says to forget oneself, lose sight of oneself and one's own interests. And the Lord teaches us that through the discipline, right? It tells us here in the book of. uh, How did I look that up? Here, I just look up this Hebrew word here and um, go to here. Yep. This is the book of Job 36. Let's start at five. Behold, the most high is mighty and despises not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He would draw if not his eyes from the righteous. But with kings are they on the throne, yea, he doeth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters, and be holden in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. And the perfect example of this is King uh, uh, Manasseh, you know, and also our plight, right? We can grab this in Wisdom of Solomon, in the sixth chapter. This Wisdom of Solomon 6, in verse 9. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. So it's speaking unto us, because through our Lord's sacrifice, through his blood, he has made us kings and priests unto the heavenly father. You see? Verse 10, for they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy, and they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. How are we being taught? How are we being instructed? 
How are we being trained? It's through the chastisement of the Lord. It's through the afflictions. And through that, we see the benefits. We see the benefits of it, right? It tells us by opportunity of, uh, uh, of leisure. How can one get wisdom that holdeth the plow? Roughly paraphrasing Sirach, I believe it's the, um, the 38th chapter. So the Lord shows us these things, but I want to come back to this wisdom of Solomon. I just wanted to read that so we can know he's talking about us here in the book of Job. Back in Job 36 and 9, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. You see that? So through that discipline, through that instruction, through that affliction that was brought upon, right, those kings, they became obedient and therefore prosperity came. And even today, we're seeing the benefits of our discipline, right? In the form of how the Lord delivers us, gives us strength to, uh, 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 to make it through the trials and tribulations, different financial woes and you know, and, 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 and job problems, you know, women problems, family problems, different ailments and, 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 and body injuries that we go through, man. And the Lord strengthens our heart, gives us the right precepts, sends us a brother, <laughs> you know, in those moments to comfort us, to strengthen us, to quicken us, man. To make us alive, to revive us in the spirit once again. And these are all signs. These are all benefits of the Lord's grace and that we're moving in the proper way. Verse 12, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. And we see the example of that taking place today, man. With Jake getting shot down and, and the different judgments that's going on uh, upon these uh, wicked niggas, man. You see, and it's because of their refusal Right. It tells us in Wisdom of Solomon. Matter of fact, let me jump over to Wisdom of Solomon 10. It's Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 8. For regard and not wisdom. Now, when you start up at 7, it's talking about um the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. But it could be applied to today because America is modern day Sodom. And these people are not regarding wisdom. So therefore, they're going to get the hurt that's going to come upon them, man. During the during Jacob's trouble, right? The famine, the pestilence, the turmoil, the uprising, the sedition that's going to take place. And ultimately, the thermonuclear fire that the Lord is going to rain upon this place via the, uh, uh, the missiles. And also um, those laser beams from the chariots. But verse eight, it says, for regard and not wisdom, they got they got not only this hurt that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness so that in things wherein they offended they could not so much as be hid but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her that's a that's that's a hot precept i want it but that's not i mean that's a hot precept but that's not the one i wanted but that's beautiful within itself anyway because the very true beginning of wisdom is what let's go back to wisdom of solomon 6 and read 10 again for they that keep holiness holily shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words, desire them, and ye shall be instructed. What was that uh, Greek word for chastisement? What was those different definitions? Instruction, discipline, being learned, right? Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her and found of such as seek her. She preventeth them that desire her. That word preventeth is old English for meat. She meeteth them that desire her and making herself first known unto them. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail for he shall find her sitting at his doors. And in Sirach, the sixth chapter, it says that um, you shall eat of her fruits right soon. So when we go through these different things and these different trials and, 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 and we start applying the different precepts, we see the benefits of it, man. When I was in the world, I was some, somewhat of a hothead, 
you know, didn't re respect the authority of the police. So the police would pull me over at different times. And what the fuck you pull me over for? And, you know, cussing them out and doing this, giving them a hard time, man. I couldn't even tell you how many tickets I didn't got, man. <laughs> you know? How many times my car was towed. Then coming into the faith, applying the wisdom of the scriptures. And those things haven't happened, man. And Yahweh Basham it, Yashar it, 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 it still won't, you know? But it speaks about agree with the adversary quickly, a soft ass, a turn away wrath. There's been plenty of times, man, where the spirit got me out of a ticket by, by applying the precepts. You see? And that's just a small example of applying the discipline of the scriptures and reaping the benefit. And that's denying ourselves. Because in your mind, yo, you, you know, you want to cuss them out. You want to react. You want to be angry. But what do the scriptures tell you? You know, it says anger resteth in the, uh, 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 in the bosom of fools. Speaks about being able to rule our spirit. Soft answer turneth away wrath. Spit on the fire, right? And this is through application of the precepts, and that's showing forth discipline even when we want to react a different way. But we bridle ourselves. That goes back to what? Denying ourselves, lose sight of one's interest, taking up our cross, and following after our Lord, Yahweh Shai, man. Verse 15, to think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom, and whoso watcheth for her shall quickly be without care. Before, I'm sorry, for she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. In every thought. And through the trials and tribulations, through the afflictions that we go through, it comes to a point where we start to think before we react. That's that discipline and receiving the benefit of it. I believe that's Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. It speaks about, um, how is it worded? Deuteronomy six. Yep. And eight, it says, and thou shalt matter of fact in seven, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. That's all. That's continually in our mind and meetest us in every thought. Right. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes, man. Spiritual glasses. You see. And whatever we put forth our hand to do is done through what? Through the wisdom. But let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 16, for she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. So going back to that 10th chapter, they didn't regard the discipline, man. Matter of fact. Yep. Baruch 4 and 13, they knew not his statutes, nor walked in the ways of his commandments, nor trod in the paths of discipline in his righteousness, man. You see? So, the, so these people are not trodden down the path of discipline within the righteousness of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 17. For the very true beginning of her, right? The beginning of wisdom is the desire of discipline and the care of discipline is love and love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws, the application of these precepts, is the assurance of incorruption. Those are the benefits. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Do not it say that when you uh, take a step closer to the Lord, the Lord takes a step closer to you? Roughly paraphrasing that, man. This is a... Uh... The book of James 4 and 8, draw nigh to the heavenly father and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye dumbbell minded. And our hearts, our minds are being purified through what? The renewal of our mind. Romans, the 12th chapter, the second verse. <clears throat> Going back, 
Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 19, and, cor and incorruption maketh us near unto the heavenly father. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom, man. So us trying down these path, the path of discipline is going to show forth the ultimate benefit, man. And that's the kingdom of heaven and everything it has to offer. In the book of Job, it speaks about how uh, Esau won't see the, 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 the brooks of honey, the floods. You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing it, man. Just listen to the allegory, you know, listen to how the Lord describes what he has prepared for us, man. And we're only going to obtain that through what? Through discipline, right? So now let's go back to this uh, Job. Back in Job 36 and 10, it says he openeth also their ear to discipline and commandeth that they return from iniquity. Now, what I did was looked up this word discipline. Now, it's the Hebrew word mawasa, mawasara, mawasa, which means discipline, chastening. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. That Revelation 3 that we read, you see? Correction, discipline. It says Strong's definition, chastisement, reproof, warning, or instruction. And that's key right there, instruction. So now what I did was, it's H4148. I just typed into the uh, the search engine that Strong's uh, number, H4148. This is the first one that pops up, Deuteronomy 11 and 2. I started one. Therefore, thou shalt love Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah thy power. How do we love the Lord? By taking heed unto his discipline, the law, statutes, and commandments. And it ain't just talking about the laws of Moses. When I was speaking about, you know, um, not respecting the authority of the police officers, those different precepts I quoted weren't in the law of Moses, man. Quoted it in the book of Proverbs. I quoted it in the book of Surat. So these are all laws, man. That teaches us to deny ourselves. So it says, therefore, thou shalt love Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall thy power and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the lord your power his greatness his mighty hand and his stretched out arm, and his miracles and his acts which he did in the midst of egypt unto pharaoh the king of egypt and unto all his land but the point is that word chastisement right there man it's the same word mawasa and this is how we're learned this is how we're instructed this is how we're taught and this is how we will reap the benefits of it Job 5 and 17, behold, happy is the man whom the most High correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the almighty. As it is written in Hebrew 12, it says that the chastening of the present time is not joyous, but grievous, but it yielded the peaceable fruits of righteousness, man. Matter of fact, let's get that because that's showing forth that discipline. And, and, through, and through that discipline, it shows forth the benefit. That's what I meant, Salakia. Shows forth the benefit. Because there is no benefit without chastisement, like Apostle Ramlop said. Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening for the present seeming to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And it speaks about being exercised in these things, right? Let's jump over to Sirach 50. Let's start at 27. Joshua, the son of Sirach of Jerusalem, hath written in this book the instruction... Mawasaw of understanding and knowledge, the discipline of understanding and knowledge, who out of his heart poured forth wisdom. Blessed is he that shall be exercised in these things, and he that layeth them up in his heart shall become wise. For if he do them, he shall be strong to all things. For the light of the Lord leadeth him, who giveth wisdom to the godly. Blessed be the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai forever, Amon, Amon. You see that? And that's what? The peaceable fruits of righteousness, man. That yielded itself afterward. You know, and we feel it, man. And that feeling is great to be able to endure whatever we went through, man. To know that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is there with us, man. That shows forth his love within us. This is the book of Romans 5. I started one. Therefore, being justified by faith, 
we have peace with the Most High through our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience, being exercised, right? And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us, man. So it shows the strength and the grace of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah within us when he gives us the, the strength, when he gives us the, um, the discipline to make it through those different trials, to, to, to take heed to the instruction that's given us. Through the Holy Spirit. You see that? So now let's go back. Proverbs 1. I'll start at 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, Mawasaw, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And we're learning that through the discipline that Yahweh Basham Yahweh is uh, uh, um, given unto us, right? In the form of this word, but also the trials and tribulations that we go through within our walk. You see, Proverbs one and seven: the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My saw discipline. Verse eight, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. And, and, and look at look at all these, you know, different precepts with Mawasar in it, man. He shall die. With, nope, that ain't the one. Proverbs six and twenty three for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Discipline. Receive my instruction, discipline and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Hear discipline. And be wise and refuse it not. He that he is in the way of life that keepeth discipline, instruction, but he that refuseth reproof, erreth, man. <laughs> you see? So, man, man, look at look, look, look at all these different ones, man. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. And that shows forth the benefit. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But with all thy getting, get understanding. He shall be strong in all things. He who is exercised in these things, man. Hear counsel and receive instruction, discipline, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. You see? Man. Man. 23, 12, Proverbs, apply thy heart unto instruction, discipline, and thy ears to the words of knowledge, man. 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. So, man, it's beautiful, man. For Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you know, for uh, uh, the Holy Spirit to be able to understand, you know, these precepts, man. To apply to ourselves, to be able to walk in it, man, so that we can receive, you know, the benefits of his grace, man. So, you know, I'm going to end it there, Lord. Well, I hope this was edifying. You know, uh, you know, I heard the apostle make that statement, man, and, and it sparked, you know, it, it sparked my spirit, you know. So, Lord, well, I hope this was edifying. Thawadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, salutations to you brothers, you fuses that may be watching as well. You know, this is the rite of passage, man. You know, we on our way. May Yahweh Basham Yahweh allow us to endure until the end and to continue to um, allow us to receive instruction. Matter of fact, I think there's a precept. In the book of Psalms. This is a good one. So teach us Psalms 90 and 12. So teach us to number our days that we may, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You know, 
And I, I was thinking of this. It's a precept where it says, apply our heart unto thy precepts and our feet unto thy paths. Man. Maybe not, but once again, Lord, well, I hope that was edifying. Shalom. Shabbat shalom.